I was born into a sewing family and I grew up next door to my grandmother and her sisters who were my great aunts and so I I knew about it before it was even a thing. I thought every, everyone quilted and I it was a small town. There was always uh, somebody getting married, baby being born, and so the quilt frames would come up and uh, as a little girl I would play under the frames until I was old enough to thread needles and then I would, they would hand me down the needles underneath the frames and I would thread them and hand them back up and then pretty soon I thought anyway I was old enough to put stitches in the quilt and probably they probably took them out a little bit after I left I don't know because I never knew that until after we did that for my little sisters <laughs> after they quilted and so we would take them out and fix them and then until they got old enough you know and so I'm sure that's probably what happened with me. I love vintage sewing equipment because they don't make it like they used to anymore. And uh, the cuteness factor is important to me, but more important is how it works. I love Singer Featherweights. I learned to sew on a Singer. And uh, I love the Featherweights because they're portable. And I, I do go to Sew Day a lot and I teach a lot. And so I take my Featherweights with me. This one, of course, is painted with automotive paint. And it was normally black but it really needed a paint job so it got a new updo. I display my all of my fun sewing things in my studio. Some of them are in the, you know throughout my home but in my studio I have shelves that I put all my fun things. I like to be surrounded with color and uh, vintage things and I spend most of the time in my studio so that's where I put them. Uh, my style of quilting is vintage probably because I um, grew up around vintage fabric that wasn't vintage then, you know, but uh, my, as, as quilters we all save our stash and so a lot of the fabric that my grandmother and her sisters used were feed sack um, prints that were in their stash and I grew up in uh, late 60s, early 70s, where everything was uh, flowers and gingham, and so that's my style as well, because uh, my mother sewed our clothes until we were old enough. She taught us to sew until we were old enough to sew along with her or sew our own, and that's typically what I chose, is ginghams, daisies, flowers, little geometric prints. and. So as I got old enough to piece my own quilt blocks, um, there wasn't a lot of 100% cotton fabric available in the shops anymore, and so I would just use my grandmother's and my aunt's, and I just got used to sewing with vintage style and vintage colors, and I, I still love them to this day. I was contacted by Riley Blake, and uh, I went in and interviewed with Brett, and I really um, was impressed with Brett, really thought a lot of him, and then I met his wife, Cindy, and I decided to go with Riley Blake because I loved that they were right next to me in Utah. I live here in Utah as well, and I was used to working with a company. Uh, at that time, they were just starting out, and I was used to working with a company, um, Provo Craft, that was here in Utah as well, and I started working with them when they first started out, and I worked with them for 12 years, and that was a wonderful relationship, and, and I just, after meeting Brett and Cindy, I kind of had the feeling that it was going to be the same kind of experience. So that's why I went with Riley Blake, and I have not regretted it since. I named my company Be In My Bonnet because my grandma used to say that a lot, uh, meaning she had a, you know, an idea or a little bit of energy maybe that she wanted to get something uh, accomplished that day. And when I came to the point where I decided to do my own patterns and I knew I needed a, a pattern name, I'd already designed a pattern and I needed to slap a name for my company on there real quick and that's just what came into my mind. Uh, a Be In My Bonnet to me means an idea buzzing around in my head trying to get out, and that's pretty much what it's like. Mm -hmm. 
So I've really, my whole life, have made things. I'm a goal-oriented person, so I always, instead of picking up a needle and thread and saying, I'm just going to sew this, I, I always wanted a purpose or a goal, like I'm going to give this as a gift, I'm going to hang this on, on this wall, I'm going to make it for my aunt, my sister, my brother, something. And so after I uh, was married and continued on making things, I set goals to what I was what I was going to do with the money that I earned. So I remember one time I painted a whole bunch of things, went to a boutique until I sold enough to buy a dining room table that I had my eye on. And then as soon as that, you know, uh, was bought, then I would think of something else and continue on. And I still do that to this day. I am a goal person and that's why I create for the love of it. But then I like to have a goal in the end. I really don't know what my life would be like if I didn't design. That's what I do, that's who I am. I'm a designer and I love it.